All right, we are going to go ahead and get started now that it is 11. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, we ask that you please stay on mute throughout the presentation. We will have time for Q&A at the end. And so that is when you will have an opportunity to go off mute, mute and ask your questions. But until that point, um, please keep your mic muted and your video off to limit any background noise. If you have questions throughout, please feel free to enter them in the chat and we will get to them throughout the presentation. Um, we will be recording this presentation as well as streaming it live to our Facebook page, which is the Human Services Center Corporation. My name is Elizabeth Fries, and I am an outreach coordinator with the Human Services Center. And this webinar is brought to you by the Mon Valley Provider Council's Working Group on Employment and Training. The MVPC is a council of about 70 member agencies that work together to identify and address gaps in services in the Mon Valley region of Allegheny County. Um, and the Employment and Training Group does a lot of work around increasing access to resources for job seekers. So with the COVID-19 pandemic and a transition to a predominantly vir virtual world, we wanted to provide training on how to navigate the virtual world as a job seeker. So today we will have Ken McCoy from Equus Workforce Solutions, who will present to us on how to be prepared and successful for a virtual job fair. Ken is a member of the Equus Workforce Solutions National Service Delivery Team as Operations Support Director for over 300 locations throughout the United States specializing in technology and innovation. He has worked with multiple operations on virtual job fairs as, he, as the need to provide options for job seekers and businesses to connect in innovative ways has become a priority. Ken has a Bachelor of Science in Management and Organization and is a Society for Human Resource Management Senior Certified Professional. So with that, I will have Ken take it away. Great. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth, and welcome everybody to uh, the webinar today to talk about what is a virtual job fair. I'm going to here take myself off a camera to save some bandwidth. Uh, one of the challenges in our virtual world is the, uh, the world of the internet is not unlimited, and sometimes we run into some issues with that. So I'm going to stop my video and start sharing my screen. And we're going to go through um, a, a variety of topics regarding uh, virtual job fairs. And hopefully everyone can now see that screen okay. Yes, we can see that. Great, thank you. All right, perfect. So, um, yeah, so we're going to talk through uh, what is exactly a job, virtual job fair. We're going to talk through a couple of different types, and we're going to talk through a, a variety of tips to not only get ready for a virtual job fair, but how to actually attend it, and then what are kind of the next steps. And then I have a couple of examples of live events that we're going to take a look at so you can see exactly uh, what they look like in real time. So uh, as we go through this, obviously, there'll be some questions. We'll gather those up at the end. And uh, without any further ado, we're going to talk through what is a virtual job fair. So the key topics we're going to cover today is exactly what is a virtual job fair, how to get ready for an event, some tips for success, and then what's next. And uh, I think the interesting thing about virtual job fairs are that if you've attended a traditional physical event where it's held at a, uh, you know, at a community location or a center where you have employers that show up in person and you uh, go through and talk to a variety of individuals, in a lot of ways, it's very similar to how you get ready for an event like that. Um, there are obviously some key differences when you're dealing with a remote situation, but uh, some of the things that we'll talk about are very, very similar. So what exactly is a virtual job fair? A virtual job fair is some type of event that's going to be held in an online platform um, via, uh, oftentimes organizations will either have a, a program or an application that they have subscribed to that provides the actual event, 
or it may be as so very, very fancy in terms of it may have some animation, it may have video capabilities, there may be a text feature, things like that. Or it could be very, very simple in terms of a just go to a website with has links to a varying employers uh, own job boards or application pages. So there's a really wide range of uh, types of virtual job fairs. What you see on your screen here are, are two examples that we're going to take a little deeper look at a little bit later in the presentation that are examples of two different ways that job fairs are actually uh, executed. But they can range anything from a very organized professional looking application set up like these to a simple um, link to a website with uh, links to different uh, job boards or job applications for employers. Here's a couple of other things around virtual job fairs. Most job fair uh, virtual events are going to require you to do a registration. And un oftentimes, unlike a typical or old style physical event, um, you're going to do, they're usually going to have this done in advance. Oftentimes, it can be up to even 30 days, uh, depending on the, when the event's scheduled and, and how significant it is. So <clears throat> the, the registration piece can be everything, as you see, the, the, the one on the right uh, is pretty basic. You're going to have an email address, it's going to ask your first and last name. It's going to ask, uh, in this case, the country uh, of residents that would be most likely for to make sure you're getting the right language and it's going to ask you for a password because you the nice what happens with most of the events is they'll allow you to pro create a profile and that profile may have additional information that it will ask for and, and and most often an opportunity to upload your resume so you'll be able to create this profile and actually go back to it and update it prior to the event um, the uh, one on the left has a, as asking for a little bit more information, uh, so they can be different depending on what they're looking for. In some cases, a virtual job fair registration will ask for information that you almost feels like you're doing a basic job application. Some of the uh, app, the events actually um, use this information for their employers to be able to go back and look at. Okay, here's a registrant that has. Em and put information that they have a certain type of experience or a certain type of education or other background, they will use that uh, afterwards to be able to reach back out to the candidates. So it's definitely uh, to your advantage to uh, fill out these registration forms uh, in, in as much detail as you can. And also a resume, if you have one to be able to upload, you'll want to make it up, you want to make sure it's updated and uploaded because that's an important piece uh, later on. Uh, job fairs then, once you have the actual site, can be set up a couple of different ways. The one on the left is uh, set up in what they have called virtual booths, which are exactly what they sound like. They're a, uh, a, a animated or static looking image of a booth that you would actually go to and enter, and then get further information about that company and what um, job positions they have available. Uh, the best um, sites also do a good job of having information about that company. So not just the company name and what positions they have, but maybe some information about uh, what they're like to work for. In some cases, they may have a video that talks a little bit about, uh, about that company and what it's like to be an employee there. And then the one on the right-hand side uh, is a little bit more focused around chat. That particular site was more about having various chat rooms to have uh, information sessions about the type of work and the type of positions they have available. And again, I mentioned earlier, um, the virtual, a virtual job fair could have a variety of different um, uh, capabilities in terms of how you interact with it. So it could be to the could be very basic to where all you're doing is clicking a link and um, making a connection with a job uh, on, on their particular application or website, all the way to having a video uh, interview on the spot capability. So you could have any, anything in between depending on the type of site they're using. And this gives you a little bit closer look on that particular site, how they have a variety of chat rooms set up. And um, as far as to have discussions with uh, representatives of this particular organization. And uh, the one we'll look at live here in a little bit uh, has a similar type of a setup. So uh, again, not all sites are gonna have that uh, chat room uh, feature, but uh, most of them 
that seems to be a very common feature for most of these sites. And in this case, this particular event that was going on yesterday uh, was, was very specific around the chat feature. feature. It did not have uh, specific links to individual jobs that they wanted, they really tried to push you to their website for that. Then to contrast that with the other event, the other uh, location, they have what looks like to you appear, as I mentioned, kind of a virtual booth. And uh, this is a test site that we're looking at, so it's not customized as it ordinarily would be, but in a, a normal event, there'd be some uh, <clears throat> signage around there to let you know that it's, that's exactly the site you're looking into. And, and as again, we'll dig deeper into this particular uh, one in a little bit to show you how the navigation works. Uh, but this will take you, there will be links that would take you to their uh, company information, what jobs they have available, things like that. And again, thinking about um, the registration piece that you did prior to this, attending this event, um, that information is going to be accessible to employers uh, after the fact. So that's an important uh, thing to note, which really distinguishes a virtual job fair uh, to a uh, old fashioned or older style physical event where you, you walk around with printed copies of your resumes and, and hopefully you, you, know, you get a chance to talk to someone and maybe leave a copy. Uh, here, uh, employers have that ability to go back later and review attendees to the event and that's a, a real big plus. So as we touched on, you know, for a virtual job fair, pre-registration is typically going to be required. And as part of that, you need to have an email address. Now that sounds like a basic concept, but that's something that you're going to need because uh, number one, that's typically how um, these events use, they, they make that your login name is going to be your email address, but also they're going to utilize that later to communicate with you. And that's an important piece. Now, just a, uh, as we go through some of these things, I'm going to give you a couple little tips too on email addresses. Uh, email address says a lot about you as an individual. So you definitely want to make sure if you don't have one already, make sure you've got a, a, a nice professional sounding email address. Uh, something that, that sounds along the lines of, you know, I like fuzzy kitties 25 at gmail.com doesn't usually inspire a lot of confidence in a, um, a recruiter. So it's important to have a very professional sounding email because you have to remember in a, in a virtual setting, much like uh, any type of uh, job application you're doing, you're not necessarily going to get an opportunity to speak face to face to someone. So they're judging you uh, by the information they have at hand. And your email address usually is a first step in that judgment. So uh, very important to have a, a good professional email address. We mentioned you may be able to upload a resume to your profile, so it's important to have an updated resume. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some tips around uh, how to make sure your resume is uh, not uh, telling too much about yourself that you don't want them to know. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but you wanna have a resume uh, available. Uh, having it in a PDF format is the best um, way to do that uh, from a, and most of these systems will accept that. I also touched on too, your registration information may ask for some work history. They may be utilizing the registration feature as a very basic job application. So uh, be prepared uh, to do that. Uh, one uh, trick that sometimes people get caught out on when they're registering for a virtual job fair is um, sometimes, depending on how significant that registration information is, you may or may not be able to save what you're doing. So what I mean by that is once you get started doing that registration, make sure you're in a position where you can finish it. Um, that's, that's an important piece because you don't want to get halfway through it, then realize you can't finish, try to come back and have to redo everything. So that's something to be prepared for. Uh, the event may send you out reminders. That's one of the nice things about a virtual event. Um, the, the challenges to holding uh, events like this in a virtual world is it makes it, it's very easy for individuals to sign up, um, but it's also very easy for people not to come. So the uh, events typically will send out reminders uh, that the event is coming. That's again, another key reason why the email address is so important. So keep, you know, be on the lookout for that and make sure you make note of, because one of the challenges too in this world that we get is we're being inundated with so much, so much information. You may sign up for an event, you know, two or three weeks out ahead of time and then forget when the actual event is coming. So make sure you note when that is and it's possible you may get a reminder. 
we talked a little bit about chat rooms or video interviews may be included. Um, that's not necessarily uh, a given for a virtual event. Uh, it seems to be that a chat or text tape feature is a pretty common thing now for most virtual uh, job fair events, but that's not necessarily always the case. And video is a little less uh, common because that's a very expensive feature to include on a, a virtual event platform. So, but you do want to be prepared either way. So when you're dealing with a chat room situation, you have to remember that again, much like your email address or your resume, you're being assessed as a potential candidate by whoever you're chatting with. So make sure you're not chatting with them as if you were texting your friends. You have to make sure that you're uh, being very professional in how you write and ask questions because that's, that's part of the um, criteria that people or candidates or recruiters are doing to size you up whether they're interested in you for future opportunities. So being professional, those communications are very, very important. Uh, same thing around the uh, video interview piece. You wanna make sure that you're dressed, regardless of whether you know a video is happening or not, you wanna be dressed uh, as if you were going to be speaking to someone um, in person. The events, uh, the other difference around a, a, a virtual job fair, which is um, very uh, great for employers, is an event could be as much as a, as a few hours. Again, if you're used to a specific uh, type or a, an old, you know, the old kind of traditional job fair where it happens, you know, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m on a Wednesday, this could be an all day thing. It could start at 8 a.m. in the morning and last till 8 p.m. in the evening. Uh, one of the um, great things about a virtual event is it does not lock people into having to actually go to a physical location. And these were starting to get some um, real interest prior to everything that's kind of gone on with the pandemic as uh, we were, as, as there was a need to try to reach out to job seekers in non-traditional ways. Uh, everyone can't always get to a physical location. And with the advent or the uh, the influx of smart devices, uh, iPads, iPhones, uh, Androids, things like that, you don't have to go somewhere physically to actually go see something. So uh, having a virtual event like this uh, allows for a broader reach and a longer period. So sometimes an event can be uh, typical size. Most of them tend to be 10 to 4, but I've seen them last for two or three days. They're, they're available. So um, that's one of the nice things about a virtual job fair, but you want to make sure you're aware of when you're looking for one or you're registering for one, you know exactly how long it's lasting. And the great thing about virtual job fairs is most of them can be accessed from any device that connects to the internet. So uh, if you have a tablet, you have a, a smartphone, uh, you have a, you know, it doesn't really matter where you are at, as long as you can get to the internet with some type of device, you can access a virtual job fair. But you know, again, the key thing is you do need to have the internet as they are gonna be, um, that you'd have to have that access uh, to them that way. So, um, but that's one thing that's, that's great. So uh, if one, one thing I've always recommended to individuals, you know, you can, you don't have to necessarily do this on your own. If you have someone that you're working with as helping you in your job search, you can certainly, uh, you know, have them with you as a support person, or in, you know, this case in our remote world, you know, you can do it from uh, the safety of your home or other location. So those are some of the kind of tidbits about, uh, you know, how, what a job fair is, a virtual job fair. And again, we're going to look at some more details here uh, towards the end as far as looking at some actual sites. But getting ready for a job fair, a virtual job fair is really no different than um, a physical event. And one of the things that candidates are, are recruiters, I'm sorry, are really looking for for candidates is what level of preparedness do you have? When you're talking to them, when you're interested in what they do, you know, what kind of research have you done? Do you know anything about their company? Are you, uh, and that's a really important thing. So depending on the event um, you're looking at, they tend to be uh, categorized in three different ways. You've got a, a, either a single, single employer event, which is one of the examples we'll have here in a little bit, but you also may have an industry-wide, so there may be a healthcare virtual fair or a um, manufacturing virtual fair or so, you know, something specific around an industry, or it could be just wide open 
to a whole list of employers. So the nice thing about virtual events, is they typically will tell you what the list of, of participating employers are. So really, really important before you attend the event that you take a look at that list of employers and do a, just a little quick you know, viewpoint of make sure that there are ones that there you're interested in being a part of because much like a physical event, once you get into it, you, you could spend a lot of time just going from employer to employer to employer trying to figure out whether there's something they have that's of interest of you or they're an employer that you're even interested in. And you want to be able to focus your energy on those key employers that you are really have an interest in and you can really focus your attention because it can really get um, overwhelming when you get into the actual event, whether that's physical or virtual. So make sure you take a look and review that list of employers. And if there are a few that you're really really, really interested in, you know, do a little bit of basic research so that if you do happen to get into a chat session or some type of a uh, virtual interaction, you want to, you want to at least say, hey, you know, I, I know a little bit about you. That's, uh, that tells the recruiter that you are serious about uh, their company and not just uh, fishing around for anything they might have. That's a real big point. We talked a little bit about resume. Make sure you update your resume and a couple of tips around doing that. Number one, we were touched on the email, um, uh, making sure that you have a professional email. That's a really, really, it's a first step that people look at to, to judge uh, what they're looking at as far as a candidate. Um, you also want to make sure you remove uh, specific information around your at your location. That's kind of a new thing lately uh, that people, because of, we're dealing in this remote world, in this virtual world, that um, oftentimes it may or may not matter where you live debate based on where uh, the position is. But if you put that information in there, sometimes recruiters will make an, a, a, a judgment or assessment thinking, oh, that person lives too far away. They're not going to be able to uh, come do this job. So you want to, you, it's, it's always a good practice to remove uh, any type of location specific information. The only time that would really be a change is if there's specific uh, guidance in the particular job that says you have to live in a certain certain area to be considered but that's fairly unusual that's fairly rare anymore so anything you can remove in terms of that identifies where you are located is, is very helpful uh, and then along those same lines uh, make sure that you are uh, removing anything that can 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 give away any hints to your age. So when you're talking about your experience level, depending on how much experience you have, you really only need to go back 10 or 15 years of experience. And you do not, you know, anything beyond that, unless it's particularly relevant to um, what you're talking about or what the position you're looking for, um, you don't need to include that. And certainly if, if that is the case, it gets back too far, leave those dates off. Um, because that's going to be anything that people are going to do to try to make a judgment based on your age. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, well, you're not supposed to make this decisions based on age. That's uh, discrimination, right? Well, you are correct. However, um, it's only discrimination is if they specifically make a decision, oh, I'm not going to, to hire you based on age, and they uh, you know, document that somewhere. They're most likely not going to do that. They just aren't going to look at your resume and and go further in the process. So very important to uh, take these little tidbits to update your resume to uh, make sure you can be considered. Also check in the simple things too, make sure spelling and other errors, you know, you don't want to get uh, knocked out because you had a misspelling. Uh, where you access the event is also important because you need to make sure you've got a, a good area that is um, free of distractions and has good internet coverage and, and things like that because you're going to, you know, you want to allow for enough time to be able to, to attend the event and uh, be able to focus your attention on on what you're doing. So for example, uh, night, test how you will access the event. So do you, when you get to wherever you're at, does your uh, internet, if there's something specific you have to do to get to the internet, make sure you know how to do that. Give yourself a little extra time uh, to make sure it works. You also want to plan, as we talked about, plan your time for the event. Allow enough time to to uh, be able to peruse. Now, the nice thing about a virtual event is you can kind of come and go. So if, if you have a situation to where you can't, you know, allow, like maybe be there right when it starts. And, and that's another nice thing about a virtual event. You don't have to necessarily be the first one in the door. It's not, it doesn't have the same kind of impact as a physical event. So you may have a situation where you, you know, 
we were able to log into the event and uh, check it out sort of first thing, kind of get a feel for what's going on, then come back later uh, to spend more time. That's certainly something you can do and, and that's not going to uh, have a negative impact. But you may want to tie that around specific chat room time. So again, uh, some of these events are very specific around a chat room that is has a particular topic that you're interested in. So you want to make sure you um, you are, are ready for those particular times. And some of these events, what's nice about them is, and you'll see in the one we'll look at here in a minute, um, has a way to add the particular chat time to your calendar. So it will remind you that that chat room is available and open. So a couple of other tips for success that we've kind of touched on, you know, make sure you allow enough time for the event. Give yourself time, even though it sounds like it might be, uh, you know, an all day thing. Uh, you want to make sure you have enough pl plenty of time to be able to devote to um, looking through and reviewing the, the uh, opportunities that are in the event. Try to reduce the distractions that you have uh, while you're attending. It's again, because it's a virtual situation, you're operating under remote uh, conditions. It's real tempting to have uh, to do it in your home or other situation. Make sure that you, uh, you give yourself some room and some time to be able to focus on what you're doing. Dress appropriately. So uh, regardless of whether the event has a, a video component or any type of face-to-face uh, -face situation that you're aware of, it's really important to dress in, in an appropriate fashion. And that doesn't necessarily mean you got to put on a suit and a tie, um, but something that's, you know, that you would feel uh, good about it from a professional standpoint. So even just, if nothing else, a, a, a collared shirt or a button-down type shirt or, or, or a nice uh, a, a black, blouse dress type conversation or whatever, so that you uh, feel good about yourself as you're interacting with these um, recruiters, because that makes a big difference, how, you, how you're prepared to, to be when you're speaking to people or having chats or whatever is very, very important and is going to come through as you interact. I mentioned earlier too, when you, when you decide to get to the event and when you log in, first thing to do is to navigate around and tour the site. Don't necessarily, you do not necessarily have to go start plowing through each um, opportunity or employer right when you walk in. And that's, that holds true for a physical event too. It's really important to just kind of review, see what's going on, get the lay of how it works and try to work out some of those uh, uh, issues, but also give you a feel for, um, what's happening in the in those areas and, and, and give you a sense of, okay, this is maybe map out how you want to attack it in more uh, detail afterwards. So take your time, look through the site, uh, make sure you can see, you know, you kind of get a feel for what you're looking for because there may be opportunities or other things that you weren't expecting that may catch your attention. And I touched on this earlier, but I can't uh, emphasize this enough. Be very, very professional with your chat and texting. Uh, again, um, recruiters are evaluating you on everything that you do and in a virtual setting they don't have a lot of opportunities particularly if there's no face-to-face -face type interaction so the only way they're going to get to know or get a feel for how you are as a professional is how you're interacting with them in these chat or text sessions and it's very tempting to shortcut like you would on a text or something like that so be, be very mindful of how you do that um, that interaction because that's all they really have in order to uh, to evaluate you and that actually holds true also at, for any type of contact they have with you later which we'll touch on and we touched on this earlier too but i want to reemphasize this make sure you target specific employers and jobs that you are qualified for and have interest in um, that's important because uh, one thing that recruiters are faced with all the time is a uh a, a, just a massive pile of resumes and applications that come in for most any job they have posted. And oftentimes these candidates are not anywhere close to being qualified for the roles. They just are, you know, people are applying to positions just because they want to get their name out there. And a virtual event can be tempting to do that as well. Uh, the issue with that um, ultimately is if I'm a recruiter and I see a candidate submits a an application or a resume for a position and they're not you know they don't they're not even close to being qualified my question is well you know you didn't even really read the 
the uh, description or qualifications and that right there is going to make me not, you know, it's going to have, give me a sour taste in, your, in my mouth about you as a candidate. So that's really, really important to make sure that you are uh, applying and sending information and, and having conversations with those employers that you are, um, that you are qualified and you have an interest in. So what happens next after, after you attend the virtual job fair? Uh, be ready for an email contact. Um, that's, that's something that's very likely. Um, we, one thing that we've done, uh, not only as, as I've worked with um, job seekers on how to attend job fairs, I also spend a lot of time working with employers to, to do, to, so they can be a very effective in actually attending a job fair from the employer perspective. And one of the great things about a virtual event compared to a physical one is it's a lot easier for an employer to reach out back to you and say, hey, thanks for coming to the event, really appreciate Because one of the things that they most of these events can do is they know whether you stopped by their booth or particular location. I know one of the uh, sites that we're gonna look at here has that capability. The, the site has reporting and statistics that know if you popped into their booth and looked around. So that gives the employer an opportunity to reach back out to you and say, hey, thanks for stopping by. And that's important to make sure that you're uh, responding. Uh, by the same context, if you have an employer that you have a conversation, you get some type of a co connection with either through a chat or you submit to them a uh, resume or something specific, an action that you do during the event, uh, it's great to get some information and reach back out to them as well. Just say, hey, just wanted to thank you for having, you know, participating in this uh, virtual event. Uh, just a reminder, I, you know, I'm interested in this position and you know, have a connection with them that way. That's going to be, that's a big, important thing. Uh, one thing that uh, people typically are, are not aware of is when you go to an actual virtual event, you're, even though you're submitting some information ahead of time, you're submitting a resume, you're giving them some profile information, things like that, you're still very likely going to have to complete their online application. So often the, uh, the, employer will have a link to that. And we'll see an example of that here in a second, but um, they're gonna make, they're gonna drive you still to their company website or to do an application. So don't forget that step. Just because you have attended the virtual virtual meeting and it expressed some type of interest in the employer that you're done. You have to make sure that if there is a position you have interest in, make sure you do the online application. And that's not something you have to do right on the spot as you're doing the event, but make sure you go do that very shortly thereafter because that's, that's what the employer is going to be looking for. And then you can actually utilize that as a contact opportunity. You can follow up and say, you know, hey, I was glad to see you at this uh, virtual job fair. Um, I want to let you know that I completed my online application, you know, that sort of thing. It gives you a, an, a, an opening to have a contact with them. And again, follow up with any connections. It's very, very important. And we, we really stress to employers that put on these events that you make sure you make a connection with your with the job seekers because um, oftentimes, I know one of the, uh, the, some of the feedback that we've gotten for physical events is they feel like they, you know, while they met a lot of employers and maybe had some conversations, there wasn't any type of a connection. Whereas in this case, there's a great opportunity for that because of the, um, you've already got that, that information to reach back out with an email or something like that. So if you do get a connection with an employer, make sure you respond back to them. That's very, very important. Even if you're not interested, I think that's an important thing to note. Um, if an employer takes the time and trouble to reach out to you and it's something that you're truly, you know, after you're thinking about it or whatever, you're not interested, please respond back with them saying, hey, you know, we, I really appreciate the uh, connection, uh, but I'm just not interested in that particular position. So uh, very, very important on that. So uh, with this, I'm going to switch over and show uh, the li a couple of events that we've got. Well, there's actually a live event and a demo site that we're going to take a quick peek at to show you what these really look like in real life. So let me flip over to my other screen. And if someone can let me know if they see the Career Eco uh, Wells Fargo Women in Technology Virtual Career Fair. If we yes, we know. can see that. Would you want to take some time to answer some of the questions in the oh, chat sure. before we get to that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to do that. All right. So we have, um, if you don't 
have your work history when registering, will you be able to complete the registration? Uh, that's very, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, they typically don't make those as those fields as required. So it just kind of depends on the event. Uh, most that I've seen have, <clears throat> have not made that required. So you should still be able to complete your registration. Great, thank you. Um, and then we've got, how often should we update our resume? That's a great question. Um, really, you should update it anytime you have a, if you add a new skill or some new type of experience that you want to highlight, I think that's very important. Obviously, if you have a new, uh, uh, if you take a new job or a new position with your company, that's when you want to update it. Other than, otherwise, uh, I think it's okay to take, maybe just look at it once every, uh, maybe three to six months is enough if you don't have a lot of change. But um, that's something you, you, know, you do want to take a look at it every now and then. But if you have a new skill or new experience you want to highlight, that's always a great time to do it. All right. Um, and then how early should we arrive in a virtual job event to be prepared? Uh, typically, the event will not be live until they actually say it's ready to go. So, for example, in the case of the one we're looking at on the screen right now, it was, it was live at 10 a.m. So, I could see this particular screen before that, but I couldn't get into the event or the chat now or any of those sessions. So, um, you can oftentimes sort of get to the landing page like we have here ahead of time. Uh, but you won't be able to get in. But that should give you plenty. You, know, you should be have plenty of time. And then, of course, you've got all you know from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. to actually attend the event. So yeah, you don't have to get there too early. Just uh, making sure your connections are fine. And then the last question: Is it a good idea to wear headphones when attending a virtual job? Uh, that's a great question and a great observation. Yes, I would. Uh, I definitely would agree that that's a good thing to do because. Um, <clears throat> It can be a challenge sometimes to hear when you're not using headphones with using just a laptop microphone or, or a uh, web camera microphone. They're not always the best. <clears throat> I recommend, uh, yeah, using some type of headphones. And just uh, so you know, the he and I, I've been told, hopefully it's working well today, but I've been told that, that my headphones <clears throat> sound very, very good. These are uh, $10 headphones I think I got from Target. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a have a good sounding set of headphones, and oftentimes people use their um, their ear pods that they come with their their phone, their mobile phones, or other devices work just well, just fine. So yes, I highly recommend using a headset or headphones while you're attending. Great questions. Thank you. Uh, we can go ahead and move on. Okay, so uh, this is an example of a uh, web fair. In fact, this is, uh, if you are happening to be making any notes, uh, this particular uh, careereco.com is a, uh, a, a virtual job fair application that works for a lot of different um, companies and organizations. So they have a, a large listing across the country. So, well, I don't know that there's anything specific uh, to the Pennsylvania area right now, uh, but there could be in the future. But this is an example of a, of a, of a application that provides services for a variety of events. So, <clears throat> This particular event is happening right now as we speak, and you notice we have a, a landing page, and there's some basic things around it to, to note. So we've got the time, obviously, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, I have already registered uh, for this event, so it's going to let me write, write in, so we won't have to go through all that. But I will give you an example of, that, of what the profile looks like. So if I click on this particular button, and hopefully it will move fairly quickly. This gives you an example of the different things that I could add to my profile. So this one's pretty uh, significant. It has an opportunity. I did not upload a resume because I'm just using it for a test, but it has various things as far as where I'm located and things like that. And again, none of that was required, so I don't have to put in the, the location if I don't want to. And there's even more information as far as I can add education, I can upload a resume, if, depending on what was going on, I could upload a pro portfolio sample. So this one's pretty significant in terms of the information it's asking for. Uh, the one we'll see here uh, after this is not that significant. So I will back up and go to the my event list. 
So now this particular event uh, has uh, a few different details. So if I click on event details, I come to a main page of the particular uh, what's happening with the event. And, and this is uh, just detailing a lot of information about Wells Fargo, which is very nice. Uh, good to have some information there. Uh, this is a little bit different in terms of ones I've seen. This actually has the job postings they're looking for. And there's uh, 12 jobs that they have available. And if I click on one that maybe I was interested in, so if I click on the details, it takes me to basically a um, description of the job. And you'll notice this is on the how to apply down here at the bottom, it's directing me to their career page. So this is a good example of um, while I'm, I'm giving, providing Wells Fargo with information about me and potentially a resume and some other information, which again is, is very important. If I want to apply for this job, I still have to go to their website to do so. So um, that's important to know. Uh, this also has a significant, or this one has a couple of different chat uh, opportunities. So essentially they're doing it in the, the form of a basically uh, open sessions that uh, people can have discussions with Wells Fargo um, staff at that time. So that's always a good example there. And you have to remember, typically when you're in a chat situation like this, you're in a group setting. So you don't, now you're not necessarily getting a one-on-one -on -one conversation with, with an individual. Last thing on this particular site has specific information around their uh, website. So uh, this is a good example of a, uh, a site that has some, it's really focused around chat. That seems to be their, their real uh, uh, focus for this particular site. Now I'm going to flip over to uh, another site that I'm familiar with. This is a this is one that looks a little bit more. It's got a little more bells and whistles, and it gives you a little bit more visual um, in terms of what. It, so it gives you this this kind of um, pretend looking exposition center, and um, this is custom, all this stuff's customizable. So depending on what who's putting on the event, you'll see different uh, signage and things like that. This is their demo site, so it's going to look a little generic. But uh, a lot of these are very similar. So I've got a couple of different ways. So if I want to register, I would click on this particular button here, and it's going to pull me into their um, account situation. This is where I would fill in information. Now. Um, Again, as was asked by one of the uh, questions earlier, there's some basic registration information it's going to ask me for. And depending on the event, there may be additional um, information after I put in the basics that it, it looks for. So depending on what they want, but this one's pretty, uh, pretty basic. Again, I, I've been a part of uh, events where we asked for uh, a lot of, quite a bit of job specific um, or experience specific information because we wanted to be able to, to leverage that later for the employers. So um, if I go back to, most of them have a, a navigation method on the side. Uh, the chat room for this particular thing would pop up over here, but I have to be logged in in this case to be able to see it. So their chat sessions, uh, and, and this particular product has a couple of different ways. They can have open chat rooms that are uh, that more of a group session that multiple people can be a part of, or they can actually schedule a one-on-one -on -one chat with someone to have a, a more in, in personal conversation. So uh, you have to be kind of prepared for that. So in this particular one, they're utilizing what's called virtual booths. So um, they have this organized in what they call a, a pavilion, and there's only one, so we don't have multiple ones. If there were multiple locations to go to, that would be in this location here. But here is where they have the different um, vendors that would be participating. And again, being a test site, they don't have everything, and so there might be a local. So if I click into here, this particular virtual booth, now I'm looking at this at the image what we looked at earlier. That's a um, looks kind of kind of a high tech looking. Um, area that we would come into. And um, below here is where you're going to get into the specifics in terms of the uh, particular information for this company. So in here, we've got a company profile section that might would have information about the company, any various links to their, um, uh, any other information they want you to know. Uh, there's also going to be a, a link to particular um, job opportunities. So if I go back and look for something that has what they, in this case, they call offers. Again, another good example of what it looks like. So now we have, um, and here's where they would have the different um, job opportunities that you would have, op that we would be looking for. If you have a video about the um, company, they would put it here. There's actually a download section if there's different uh, information, such as maybe there's a, a flyer about 
potential benefit packages or even an online application flyer. Um, you'd also have a mailbox where you can actually send a um, direct message to that particular um, company. Then I just navigate back to home. In some cases, uh, there will be webcasts available as well. Uh, this particular vendor has um, the opportunity for uh, doing a webcast using videos um, as well. So they don't have, again, the one-on-one -on -one video capability as some operations might, um, but they do have that also. So that's a look at a couple of different types of virtual job fairs. Uh, is this a, a Elizabeth, we want to stop a second here. Do we have any specific questions on what, how these two events look and how any other things I can show people? Yeah, we can go ahead and open it up to Q&A. Um, thank you so much, Ken. That was a lot of helpful information. So for, um, for the Q&A, we'll have you guys raise your hand if you would like to speak um, and unmute yourself and ask your question. So you'll go to the participant button on the bottom and once you click into that, you should have an option to raise hand and that's how we will get to questions. So you are welcome to do that if you'd like to ask your question out loud. Um, if you prefer to put your question into the chat, you're welcome to do it that way as well. Um, and then for people on the phone, if you have any questions, um, you can just go ahead and ask those since you won't be able to have the raise hand function. So what are the differences between invert the virtual fairs and the person job fairs? Oh, when you say like a, phys like a physical one that you would go to, uh, kind of the old traditional style? Yeah, like what's the, tr yeah, like what are the main differences? Well, probably the biggest difference is uh, the physical event. You're going to get there and, you, you know, it's, it tends to be loud. You know, there's lots of it. You're, you're milling about with a lot of other individuals. Oftentimes, you only get uh, a quick introduction to someone who might be uh, at the event. Um, from an employer perspective, they can usually only de dedicate maybe one or two people to be there during the whole time. So it can be a little rushed. And that's what I've seen or I've gotten feedback from uh, attendees that you go there, you've got your resumes or whatever in hand, you maybe get a quick little, you know, two minute, five minute conversation with an individual. And uh, then, you know, there's, there's no real connection in, in, per se. Whereas when you do a virtual event, you as a job seeker, it's, it's, you have that opportunity to take your time, look through the event, look through the different employers at your own pace. Don't feel like you're rushed. It's not loud and, and noisy and distracting. And you have that opportunity to, to, to make a connection, uh, even albeit virtually, um, with the company in, in a less it seemed like a rush situation. So I think that's one of the biggest, you know, I guess the, the other disadvantage of, or if you were going to make a distinction between the, the other big distinction is a physical event, you know, you're getting a face-to-face -face conference. You're actually getting, to, they're getting to see you in person and you're having that, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one connection from a verbal perspective. And oftentimes that's, uh, that's really helpful. Uh, that would probably be the biggest uh, difference there. All right, and we, we do have some questions from the registration process, so I will okay. go ahead and ask those. Um, so this one is, how is the virtual job fair platform set up so each attendee can speak with the rep of their choice? Um, are there breakout sessions? What if the participant wants to speak with three or more companies? Can they get into the three different queues at the same time? Um, and can they send their resume, which I think you kind of touched on that part. But. Yes, I, and actually, the, I think the answer to that, all of those is, is yes. Uh, it really depends on the platform, number one. But um, you tip, oftentimes, I know uh, in this particular platform that we're showing right here, um, there are specific, uh, each employer virtual booth has um, chat rooms that they have specific to their employers and can have up to 10 uh, staff members be a part of those rooms. So getting a chance to speak to somebody one-on-one -on -one with an employer is, is 
pretty likely if they've got, if the particular job fair has that option. So uh, that's usually not a problem. Um, doing it, you know, if they've got various chat rooms going on, uh, doing three chat rooms that simultaneously may or may not be possible, although you can jump in and out of, of various ones. So you could, you wouldn't be locked into to one particular one if you decided to, to participate in it. So. Um, you should be able to get into any one that you want. So that's the great thing about the most of these events. They're they're not limited in far as size or volume or quantities or things like that. If you can jump around to different rooms and want to talk to a variety of people, there's uh, most likely going to be able to do that. Um, some of the employers do have specific. They want you to set up a time. So you may have to make an appointment, you know, and they may do that when you enter the session. They may say, okay, I want to have a 15-minute conversation with you at a certain time. They may require that. But most of them are open and they let you just jump in. Uh, then you mentioned the resume. Yeah, there's some of the events, um, like for example, this one that's up on the screen right now, when you uh, go into the virtual booth and you decide that there's a, a job opportunity that you're interested in, you actually will hit a button that will send your profile and your resume if you uploaded it directly to that employer via the platform. Now, that doesn't necessarily keep you from having to go online to ultimately apply using their normal system, but you can, in some cases, send a resume or your interest directly to them. All right, thank you. And then we have another question in the chat. Um, how do employers become part of a virtual job fair? Well, uh, that's usually um, the organizers of the event, much like a, uh, a traditional physical event, um, are going out and uh, getting uh, employers to get engaged with it. So uh, depending on, on the scenario, sometimes employers come to the organizers and say, hey, I need to have a job fair, and that's how it gets started. Or the organizer says, hey, we're going to put on this uh, job fair event. Do you want to be a part of it? So it's a, a variety of ways that they uh, can get involved. Uh, right now, uh, because again of the scenarios that we're running into, especially in those, uh, those situations where you can't, are not allowed to have uh, large numbers of, of individuals in any type of a group setting, um, these have become very, very popular with employers. They want any way they can to get out in front of jo potential job seekers. So they're very, very interested in becoming parts of, of, of job, virtual job fairs. So um, there's a variety of ways that happens. And oftentimes it's driven by uh, or, or groups that organize these events, reaching out to employers and inviting them to be a part of it. All right, great, thank you. Are there any other questions at this time? So why is it so important that you need to get everything you need ready before you head into the virtual fair, especially like, especially how it's always important to make sure that you get what you needed. Well, I think it's a, I think it's just more of a matter of uh, just in any type of situation, being prepared and organized is going to make your experience a lot less uh, stressful. So if you've got your information together, you've got your resume updated, um, you've got a, a setting where you can be concentrated on what you're doing, just like any type of situation, that comes across uh, when you're actually interacting with individuals and, and it makes the, the experience a lot more. Uh, again, you can focus on um, presenting yourself, focus on uh, getting the information you need from the employers. It's just, uh, just more of a, a, an organizational skill that applies not only for a physical event, but for a virtual event as well. Um, because, you know, the other thing about uh, thinking about how virtual events go, because there's such a move from employers to work, to have their workers work in remote settings or virtual, how they interact and how they work in a virtual job fair is an indicator of how they might be as an employee. So it's all about, again, being prepared, being uh, uh, ready to go so that when you have that um, interaction or you have that opportunity uh, to interact with somebody, you're uh, gonna be able to put your best foot forward. And I think that's the most important thing. It's a great question. All right, and last call for any questions.
All right. Um, so thank you guys so much for attending. Thank you, Ken. That was very helpful information. Um, so just a few closing things to go over. We will be getting the PowerPoint slides out to you. Um, so we, you will have access to that at a later date. Um, and you will also have access to the recording because we did record this for you. Um, I have put together a Google Drive folder that you guys can access. I'll have all of this information as well as other resources that include some information about upcoming virtual job fairs. So now that you're prepared for them, you can go and check some of them out. So I'm gonna put that in the chat um, and then I will also email it out because I have all of your emails now that you registered. So you will be getting that information. Um, and thank you to those of you who ask questions, you will actually be receiving a Visa gift card for your participation. So I will be contacting you about that information as well. Um, but thank you guys for attending um, and thank you Ken so much for presenting with us today. Thank you, I appreciate the time and, and good luck with you uh, going out and, and entering the world of virtual job fairs. Thank you. All right, everyone, have a good one.